you going yet? Well, float down here. Yes, we do. <laughs> hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the origins of It, as featured in Stephen King's 1986 novel of the same name, and the subsequent television and film adaptations that followed it. It is essentially an evil primordial entity that appeared every 27 years to terrorize the submissive town of Derry, Maine, feeding on the flesh and fear of its inhabitants, generally preferring children to adults since they were easier to scare and manipulate. Often seen taking the form of Pennywise the Dancing Clown, it was a shape-shifting creature that was older than our universe, and although it had lived on Earth for quite some time, it actually originated from a void outside the regions of space known as the Macroverse. Crashing down to Earth in a fiery ball that pulverized much of the land, the being created a deep crater that would become its home and the foundation of Derry itself. It had created a place in its own image, and it looked upon this place with favor from the deadlights which were its eyes. Derry was its killing pen, the people of Derry, its sheep. It can morph into any other person, animal or object, and often use this ability to either appear as a loved one to lure in its victims, or as a personification of what its victims feared most, before feasting on both their flesh and fear. Throughout the series, the entity is seen taking numerous forms from the people of Derry to many monsters that were etched into the imagination of the children it stalked, including werewolves, bats, leeches, vampires and sharks, among many more. Since its true identity was unclear to the children, they simply took to calling the being It. According to It, when humans got scared, all the chemicals of fear flooded the body and salted the meat, which is why it preferred to feast on children whose fear was simple, pure and powerful compared to the complex, pathological fears of adults. Its awakening was marked with an act of great violence, after which it would begin to feed on the townsfolk for a year, before another act of violence ended its killing spree, where it would then return to its cyclical slumber. While its physical form lived in our world as a shape-shifting manifestation of our worst nightmares, its true form is much more Lovecraftian and ambiguous, as it was an unnameable and unknowable malevolent force that considered itself eternal. Its mortal enemy was a great turtle known as Maturin, a fellow resident of the Macroverse, who, according to it, accidentally belched up our universe in a fit of indigestion. Maturin existed long before the creation of the mainstream universe in Stephen King's novels, and by nature, the giant turtle was kind, wise, loving, gentle, compassionate, and benevolent, in stark contrast to his brother, It, who was mean, hostile, and aggressive. For the longest time, It believed that both Maturin and itself were the only higher beings in existence, and although it looked upon the giant turtle with contempt, it did recognize the entity as its equal. But after it was first injured by the kids, it began to realize that it wasn't as all-powerful as it had once thought, and started considering the possibility that there might be another out there. This other is of course believed to be Gan, an all-powerful entity in Stephen King's macroverse that is thought to have created both It and Maturin. In the novel, Maturin seems to serve largely as a spectator to the events that unfolded in the battle between it and the Losers Club, and only involved itself to advise the young Bill during the ritual of Chud, while Gan provided the Losers with most of their strength during the encounter. Though it wasn't seen in the recent film adaptation, we did get a few references to the benevolent entity, like when Bill picked up a Lego turtle at his home. Who was that? Just saw my boy right here! It's a turtle. Throughout the book, it is generally referred to as a male. However, towards the end, the children came to suspect that it might have been female, due to its manifestation as a large female spider that was in the process of laying eggs. Despite its final physical form of a spider, the true form of it is never truly known, and what we see is explained as being merely the closest thing to its actual form that our mind could comprehend, due in part to its natural form existing in an interdimensional realm referred to by it as the Deadlights. This void housed a sea of destructive orange lights that drove most humans insane upon sight. In the books, Bill nearly glimpses the Deadlights and survives, but the only person to fully see the Deadlights and recover was his wife Audra. In the recent film adaptation, it's actually Beverly who saw the deadlights when Pennywise unhinged his jaw and revealed his true form. By looking into the lights, Beverly was essentially looking into another dimension beyond the realm of human beings, which is why those that looked into the deadlights either died or became catatonic due to shock. We also witness subtle hints of the deadlights with the eyes of Pennywise glowing orange throughout the film. I am eternal child. I am the eater of worlds. 
gods and of children. It was an extremely powerful celestial entity, with only Maturin being its equal and Gan its superior in Stephen King's macroverse. Shapeshifting. It can transform into any kind of being, including forms that may not be physically possible or may not exist in our reality. This ability is not restricted by space or uniformity, as it can appear in multiple places as multiple beings at once. It also has limitations on its appearance, depending on who is seeing it and how afraid they are. Illusions. It seemed to have no limit to the illusions the being could create, but primarily used them to instill fear, which meant that they had to be realistic enough to do so. These illusions were physical, as were seen with the insane reality-altering powers it possessed, and even included smells and sounds to bombard our senses and rob us of the ability to see clearly. Invulnerability In the recent adaptation, it was stabbed through the head with an iron spike and beaten, which disorientated the entity but did not kill it. And in the novel, when Bill and Richie encountered it as a werewolf, it almost instantly regenerated after being shot in the head with a handgun. All these encounters were proof that it was not a true physical entity and thus could not be killed or harmed by conventional means. Telepathy It had the ability to telepathically detect the emotions and memories of an individual and would use this ability to exploit its victim's fears. Its telepathy also enabled it to directly speak to its prey. Mind Control it had the ability to control the minds and actions of a person or several people simultaneously, and this was demonstrated by its ability to affect the minds of dairy citizens, at least those with weaker wills, and make them indifferent to the terrible events that unfolded before their eyes. It was also able to control the mind of the already unstable Henry and convince him to kill his father and attack the children that were a threat to it. The text also suggested that it could erase memories and knowledge, which would explain why all the missing people in Derry were quickly forgotten about after their disappearances. Telekinesis It can make inanimate objects fall, float, and behave supernaturally without touch. And we got a great example of this in the movie, with the petrified bodies of children that looked into the eyes of deadlight seen floating above its home. Teleportation It can teleport to any location within Derry, however, it could not leave the city. Which leads me to believe that since the town had been built around the location of it, the being had become a part of the town of Derry itself. And this is explained through Bill's line in the novel when he says, Derry is it, and it is Derry. He says it's probably from the earlier mid-1700s, when Derry was a logging town. Hold it. Pennywise the clown? That's him. That's him. 200 years ago? He was here then? Come on, it's just, a, it's just a drawing. The evil deeds of Pennywise the Dancing Clown were written throughout the book in histories, flashbacks, and knowledge that was passed down to Mike from his grandfather. In the movie, we get a glimpse of its far-reaching influence through Ben, who took over Mike's role as the resident history nerd. Ben explained Derry's dark history, telling us that people died or disappeared at six times the national average in their town. And that's just grown-ups. Kids are worse. We learn about the ironworks which exploded in 1908, killing 102 people, including 88 children who were participating in an Easter egg hunt. We also hear about the Black Spot, a nightclub created by African Americans that was burned to the ground by a hate group in 1962. Ben also explained the tale of the Charter for Derry, which started as a beaver trapping camp in the 18th century. While the entity had crashed to the ground millions of years prior, it only began to feed when the Derry settlers arrived. All 91 of the original settlers vanished within the first year without an explanation, and all that was left was a bloody trail leading to the well house, which was now located on 29 Nybolt Street. This of course was the location where it first fell, creating the deep crater that soon turned into the well that was both the lifeblood of the town, and a curse that continued to haunt the township of Derry, Maine. Throughout the novel, it constantly said that its name was Robert Gray, which leads me to believe that Gray was actually an inhabitant of Derry at one point that dressed up as Pennywise the Clown to kill youngins. Recognizing the success Gray had in the form of Pennywise, I think it's likely the entity destroyed him and assumed his form. This essentially stems from the fact that King himself had stated Pennywise the Clown was based off of John Wayne Gacy, a real-life serial killer that had worked as a clown. In fact, there is even a shot in the recent adaptation where Pennywise looks directly at Richie, who is afraid of clowns, and can be seen wearing a similar outfit to that of Gacy himself. You are next! This is battery acid, you slime! Why 
while it fed on the fears of others. I think its greatest fear was the absence of fear itself, as when it was faced with people that did not fear it, the being was actually powerless and would often run away to assume another form to get its power back. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested an in-depth look at the creature known as It. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers. Oh, well, I'm Pennywise the dancing clown. What are you doing in the sewer? The storm blew me away. Blew the whole circus away. <laughs> Going now. Oh. Without you both? You don't want to lose it, Georgie. Bill's gonna kill you.